Hello and welcome to Help Me BJD episode 10. Um, today I want to break down all of the costs of BJD ownership, including all of the necessary extras so that anyone new to the hobby has a more realistic idea going in of what it's going to entail and cost and all of that. Um, trust me, buying the doll is only the beginning. That's really the least of your worries. Um, hopefully this video can help you decide if BJDs are something that you are passionate about enough to, you know, sink that kind of money into and budget accordingly. Um, but before that, a few words on this channel and how to reach me. I'm actually going to turn... I'm actually going to turn off the YouTube comments as soon as I get around to it. It may not be right away. Um, this is mostly because I really have a hard time following what I've answered and what I haven't answered. Um, because I don't always put them in the order of, you know, question, reply, question, reply. They're kind of like all over the place. Um, so I have an email address in the box down there, description. Um, where you can ask questions. And I also have a site for dolls, um, a blog for these videos, and um, more frequent updates on where I like to shop for dolls, tips and tricks that I am using at the time, face-up artists I'm using, and you know, how to contact them, and my feedback on them feedback on companies. Uh, basically, it's a more frequent way to get information from me based on what I'm actually doing um, with my own collecting. So, again, there's a link down there in the description box. And right now it's a work in progress, but I'll be building it as I go. Um, I also have... I'm also planning to have an area on that site for my own sales. So dolls, clothes, wigs, shoes, all kinds of stuff. So if you're interested, um, you can check that out too. On a business though, expense number one is going to be the doll, obviously. Um, now what you may not realize is that there is a wide range of prices available to you. Um, you'll find that most Chinese companies tend to be cheaper. Um, Boba B, for example, offers 60 centimeter SD dolls. That's like this guy, 60 centimeters, um, for about $200 plus shipping. Um, Impel Doll has them for about $300. I would really recommend Impel Doll for people who are, you know, not really sure um, because they have nice. Well, I think that their scalps are attractive for the price. Um, however, I haven't dealt with them, so I can't give you any inside information on it. Um, they also have some great events where they'll give you a whole tiny doll for buying a new doll. Um, but obviously that's only a few times in the year, so you have to keep an eye on that. On the other end of the spectrum um, lie companies like Volks, Fairyland, Zoom, Eiffel House, and so on. Volks used to offer basic 60 centimeter dolls for $630. They don't offer them anymore. I'm not sure what they're going to do now. Um, at Fairyland, a 600 uh, bleh, a 60 centimeter doll is going to run you about $600, um, but unfortunately the People 60 line is currently not available. It's coming back though, they just haven't said when. Um, anyway, all I'm trying to communicate here is that there's a big difference between $200 and $600. So you have choices, you have ranges, so do your research, see what speaks to you at the right price, and go from there. Expense 2, shipping and custom fees. So, let's say you ordered your doll. First thing it has to do is reach you, and shipping prices are not joking around. EMS, international shipping, is extremely costly. Depending on how large the doll you ordered, just shipping it is going to run you $40 to $100, maybe even more, but usually around $60 for one mini-sized doll, MSD. Um, some companies, such as Fairyland and Dollmore, offer free shipping if you spend a certain amount. So, um, usually the magic number is $800, but it varies. So look into that. 
Um, that could help you choose where to buy or that could help you decide if you're going to try and make an order with someone else to reach that amount and save yourself, you know, about 60 to $80, whatever it is. Um, second, many countries charge custom fees for receiving the package into the country. If you live in the States, you are sitting pretty. We don't do that. Um, dolls do not get any kind of fees associated. But a lot of European countries I know have to pay this. And this can be, I believe it's a percentage of the value marked on the package. So this can easily be $100 or more. So by the time you've shipped it and gone through customs, you're suddenly paying, who knows, up to like $200 to give the doll in your country. So um, to avoid these issues, you can buy secondhand from users in your country. Um, and you can also purchase dolls through dealers in your country. So think about that. Expense number three is your face up. Um, the listed price for most dolls does not include painting its face. So this guy's got paint on his face. Um, if he didn't, his face would be all this skin tone color with no color on his lips or around his eyes. So um, from the company, the face up typically costs thirty to sixty dollars, but you're getting a default. Um, so if you want something more customized, you either have to do it yourself or pay someone else. You can hire an artist, but the more talented artists have either very long waiting times or it's just difficult to get a slot because they'll offer, say, ten at a time, and literally within sixty seconds of them opening it it'll be filled. Um, the cost for an artist face-up usually runs forty to a hundred thirty dollars depending on the artist and usually adds about seventy for someone who's you know solid and has a lot of experience. Um, depending on the artist it may take a few months for them to finish and you do have to pay shipping both ways so again you're looking at we'll just say an average of seventy dollars to get it painted plus whatever it costs to ship it to them and back um, and plus waiting times you can save by doing your own face-ups but the price of the tools is such that if you're not planning to do at least three or four face-ups it's cheaper to just get the doll an artist face-up so that is something that you can consider if you're planning to have a large collection Expense number four would be eyes. Um, a doll with no eyes is kind of creepy. Um, eyes can be as cheap as ten dollars or as expensive as two hundred for one pair. Um, usually you can get solid quality eyes for twenty five dollars from places such as Mako Eyes which people do seem to like a lot. Um, high quality urethane usually runs forty five to sixty dollars per pair. So if you have twenty dolls and you want to get them each a nice $60 pair of eyes, you can see where that adds up. <laughs> um, so remember that. Again, you can get $10 eyes. They're just not as nice, so it, it depends on where your priorities are. Um, expense number five is wigs. Unless you want a bald doll, they're going to need some hair. Um, you can get cute fake fur wigs for about ten dollars um, but synthetics like this one usually run about thirty dollars um, usually to ship a wig one wig via EMS is going to run you about twenty five dollars um, so you might want to consider either buying wigs second hand from dealers in your country or saving up and buying all the wigs you need at one time but that can be an issue if you want a limited wig because it might sell out um, more complex wigs are ones made with a lot of natural fibers, can run as much as $50 or more, and Volks wigs are also very expensive. 